Okay, Taekwondo, uh, welcome to Gentry Martial Arts, my commercial school, kind of, sort of, it's after classes in the evening. Uh, we're going to do a quick tutorial of the kicks that we have introduced this week. I'm going to hit the hi and highlight the teaching and technical points that we went over in class. If you haven't been in class because of quarantine or whatever else, uh, we're going to go through them pretty fast, but you can rewind the video and get the finer points as many times as you can. So we're going to go through them pretty quick, but like I said, I'll make sure to cover all the important points and I'm going to give you uh, 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 a drill that we didn't get to do at the uh, end of, that requires some, some extra uh, participation with another partner that we couldn't do in class. Remember, we start with our basic stretch kick. So the first one we call stretch kick. I'm simply going to keep my legs straight, swing up and back down to my own range of flexibility. Outside crescent kick makes a big circle. I cross midline, toes point straight up, up and around. It goes towards the outside. I'd be hitting with the outside blade of the foot. Inside crescent kick is the exact same kick going the opposite direction. Okay, so make sure we do both of those. Each leg opens up the hips. Etc. The more actual kicks, not just the stretch kicks, although we said the crescent kick we can use in sport too. But the first kick we work on is front kick. I lead with my knee, so very important that I don't get this half stretch, half snap thing, but it's pure snap. I lead with my knee, my foot goes past my other knee, it doesn't swing out by my shin. It leads with the knee and then extends. Remember, foot position on the front kick is toes are pointed, foot is pointed, toes are pulled back. Okay. So I'm hitting, like you do the solar plexus or something like that, with the ball of my foot as I do the kick. Either side, lead with the knee. We did the making sure the head is up. I don't round my back forward and bring my chest down to my kick. I bring my knee up to my chest and then out. Okay. That same kick, but in the horizontal plane, is what we call a roundhouse kick. So I got to turn my hips over. How do I do that? I pivot my base foot. Ideally, 135 degrees, I will settle for 90. Make sure I am pivoting on the ball of my foot, not my whole foot. Again, when you're old and have bad knees, I don't want you blaming me. That hits that baseball bat power. It's like I took my leg off and swung like a baseball bat if I finish turning my hip over. If I don't turn my hip, I don't get that swing. I turn over and I'm hitting with the top of the foot. So foot position, I point the toes, I'm hitting with the instep. We talked about a circular torso. It's almost always going to intersect at the top of the foot when I do it. Okay, so I come around and then as I kick, my knee points straight to the target. My hand, as I kick, will counterbalance. So when I finish, my hip, my knee, my shoulder, or a straight line, with my knee pointing towards the target, full extension, I re-chamber and I set it back down, make sure that base foot pivots at least to 90. Okay? Then we look at our half moon kick. Our half moon kick, I bring up like a front kick, but then it finishes more like a roundhouse kick. So it starts like a front kick and then it flips over and finishes like a roundhouse. So the difference, between the roundhouse is that I got that baseball bat swing, the knee comes around. So I get more power, but it's more secure. So there's that trade-off for speed versus power. The half moon coming at you, knee comes straight forward and then flips over as opposed to the roundhouse coming around. Or another way we say it is if my knee, if I was up against this wall, again, the half moon. I can throw that kick straight up against the wall because it comes forward. The roundhouse kick, I bring my mirrors even trying because the trajectory of the knee comes out. Then we did back kick. Back kick is just an intermediate for our side kick. I will go over my shoulder, I bring my knee up, and I stomp down and back. Right, so it's a different type of mechanic. Instead of a snapping extension motion, now it's a pressing driving motion with my whole leg. I dorsiflex the foot, I hit with the heel. So side kick position is with the heel. My back kick, I do not abduct to the side. I bring it up and I stomp down and back like so. Okay. That leads us into the hard one and that is our side kick. Okay. So 
Remember we said, roundhouse, circular snapping, snapping, top of the foot, side kick, linear, thrusting, heel of the foot, mechanically not anything alike. But what people do is, you know, on this line between the blue and the gray mats, if I don't bring my whole body across this line into the blue, if I leave any part in the gray, my foot or shin, it's going to be like this half snap, half drive kick. So remember we started on the ground, okay? I had you lay on your line, hip, knee, shoulder, straight line, my knee comes in and drives out, in and out on the line. Watch that you don't bicycle the recovery also. I also don't snap out this way. I drive on the line in and out. But nothing, my foot does not come to my butt. My knee comes to my chest. Nothing on the kicking leg goes on the gray side. Everything stays on this side as I do the kick. So when I do that standing, the key is to do this side knee. I bring my, this leg right past my other shin. I bring my knee up. So again, nothing is on the gray. I have to finish pivoting my base foot 180, my heel points to where I'm kicking, and I keep the knee high. So remember we talked about sometimes as I finish that pivot, I drop my knee down and then I swing my leg up, as opposed to keeping this dog in a fire hybrid position and then driving out where my head, I can see where I'm going and I can kick higher, okay? So make sure I turn, look where I'm kicking, so as I kick, I don't turn the shoulder down and look away. That's what makes it a side kick, is I am looking and kicking to my side as I do it. Okay, so knee comes up, turn, drive, in, out. Okay, so let's kind of occupy the numbers one more time. One up to the side, two turn, finish pivoting my bottom foot, three out, four in, five back down. At speed, try to hit your marks. Okay, now come with me over here. So, this is Bob. So, that can for body coming back, so put it Bob. Okay? So, just to illustrate a couple of things. First, that roundhouse kick, like I said is the whole top of the foot. When I finish my roundhouse kick, I'm not hitting with my big toes pointing upward. I have to finish turning my hip over so I'm hitting with the whole foot. And as you see, it doesn't really matter where I'm kicking, I'm gonna intersect, I can hit with the top of the foot. Okay, ball of the foot, again, ball. For the front kick, I bend my knee, I snap, and here, or there, right in the face, and then again, side kick is with the heel. Here's your bonus drill that's a very important drill. You are going to stand, if you can call your roommate into doing this, great. You can kind of do it with another inanimate object, corner of your um, loft. Just don't, you know, break your foot on the frame of your loft. I don't want you to fill out, to fill out that paperwork and explain why you did that. But basically I want you, more or less shoulder to shoulder, you're gonna scoot apart just enough, just enough space between the two of them, you and the, your object or person, so that you can do that side knee through the middle. So now see I'm pointing, my, now I'm almost shoulder to shoulder now. And then I'm gonna finish turning, and I'm gonna shoot that side kick right across the bow of the ball. Okay, so coming at you this way, I'm here, we're looking opposite directions initially. I take my back leg, I bring it around, I turn and I shoot it across the front. Okay? If I were to do a roundhouse kick from here, I straight up kick my partner in the, in the back. If you do this half and half kick, if we get in a hurry, as what I often see you do when you do it in air, then I bring this knee and foot across and I got my, and then you kind of, you have to kind of like fling them out this way. The only way you can kick around him is with a good, clean side kick chamber. Oh, Bob. Is a good, clean side kick chamber to get all the way around. Now I can shoot across. Now, 
Make sure you don't get to here and then kick the person beside them over here. Make sure it drives straight ahead. And make sure you stay in line. Don't be a cheater. I can do whatever kick I want out here and I'm going to clear them. Right? Make sure you stay in line because you have to bring your hip across from back here, over here, and out. Okay? So that is your bonus uh, technique or drill to clean up and get a good side kick because we need to do it on our midterm. Good luck. Keep practicing. I'll see you in class.